Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Britt Talley Daniel, MD. I'm a neurologist and a headache doctor. And today I'm talking about an unusual rare tarp type of migraine called migraine with brainstem aura. So Bickerstaff, Bickerstaff, in his seminal article entitled Basler Artery Migraine, published in The Lancet in 1961, began with the following statement from Aratius, a Greek physician from Cappadocia around the year A.D. 100. If darkness possesses the eyes, and if the head be whirled around with dizziness, and the ears ring as from the sound of rivers rolling along with a great noise, or, like the wind when it roars among the sails, or like the clang of pipes or reeds, or like the rattling of a carriage, we call the affection scotoma, or vertigo. The mode of vertigo is heaviness of the head, sparkles of light in the eyes, along with much darkness, ignorance of themselves and those around, and if the disease go on increasing, the limbs sink below them and they crawl on the ground. There is nausea and vomiting of phlegm or of yellow or black bilious matter. Well, that's a dramatic discussion of migraine with brainstem aura, and according to International Classification of Headache Disorders, Number three, which can be called ICDH3, migraine with brainstem aura, abbreviated as MBA, has previously used terms. So what are the terms that used to be called? It was called Basler uh, artery migraine originally, Basler migraine, bigger stuff migraine, and then also Basler type migraine. Migraine with brainstem aura is described as migraine with aura symptoms clearly originating from the brainstem, but has no motor weakness. What, um, the symptoms um, can be diagnosed with certain criteria in that the attacks should fulfill the criteria for migraine with R and criterion B R with the following. You gotta have at least two of the following reversible brainstem symptoms. You gotta have dysarthria, vertigo, tinnitus, which is noise or sounds in the ears or ringing, hypoacusis, diplopia, double vision, and ataxia not attributable to a sensory deficit. There should be decreased levels of consciousness, but no motor or retinal symptoms. All right, in the DSM um, International Classification of Headache 3 states that dysarthria should be distinguished from aphasia Vertigo is not, does not embrace and should be distinguished from dizziness. Dizziness um, has about 200 different causes, upper 90% of which are anxiety. Vertigo is either in her ear or in the brain. And this criteria is not fulfilled by sensations of ear fullness. Diplopia does not embrace or exclude blurred vision. The Glasgow Coma Scale score may have been assessed during admission alternately. Defects clearly described by the patients allow Glasgow Coma Scale estimation. That's a scale for seeing if someone's going into a coma or how deep it is. When motor symptoms are present, code as poor hemiplegic migraine is a separate condition. Comments. Originally, the term basilar artery migraine or basilar migraine were used, but since involvement of the basilar artery is now considered to be unlikely, the term migraine with brainstem aura is preferred. There are typical aura symptoms in addition to the brainstem symptoms during most attacks. Many patients who have attacks with brainstem aura also report other attacks with just migraine with typical aura, and they should be coded just migraine with typical aura. And also, they may have migraine with brain stimara. Many of the symptoms listed under the criteria B above may occur with anxiety and hyperventilation and are therefore subject to misinterpretation. Nosology. Um, Basler type migraine, Basler migraine, Basler artery migraine, and Bickerstaff migraine are now referred to as migraine with brain stem aura. Migraine with aura symptoms clearly originate from the brain stem and are not ischemic in etiology. Because of involvement of the basilar artery is considered now to be unlikely, the term migraine with brainstem aura is preferred. Pathophysiology. Bickerstaff, writing in 1961, invoked the, this vascular hypothesis, 
which was the prevailing, prevailing theory about migraine at the time, to explain the symptoms of basilar artery migraine that were referable either to the brainstem or the biaccipital hemispheres. In a later publication, he acknowledged that he had, quote, rather loosely termed, end quote, this condition basilar artery migraine. But there's no evidence that the basilar artery is involved in the etiology of MBA. An abnormal flow in the basilar artery has never been proven in MBA. Two cases, one with familial hemiplegic migraine with MBA-like symptoms, and one with MBA has shown ictal spasm of the basilar artery on angiography. That means they did an arteriogram of these patients and they showed spasm of the basilar artery during the attack. Another reported case showed reduced mean flow velocity in both posterior cerebral arteries during a single MBA episode with resolution of these changes after the RF. Despite these reports, it's unlikely that reversible ischemia is the source of the prolonged symptoms that occur with MBA. Cortical spreading depression, CSD, is believed to be the neuronal mechanism that generates migraine with brainstem R symptoms similar to the typical R visual R's that occur in migraine. So it's a spreading wave of electrical depression over the back of the brain. The current hypothesis is that cortical spreading depression occurs either in the brainstem or simultaneously in bilateral in the cerebral cortex. The clinical description. Well, the attack usually starts with R symptoms, which may be decreased hearing ability, hypoacusis, dysarthria, which is slurred speech, loss of consciousness, which is syncope or fainting, vertigo, which is usually a spinning sensation, ataxia, which is off-balance feeling, tinnitus, which is a ringing or sound in the ear, or diplopia, which is double vision. After the R, the pain of migraine with brainstem aura, MBA, usually locates bilaterally the pain in the occipital portion of the head, with worsening headache, nausea, and vomiting may occur. Vertigo, slurred speech, tinnitus, and diplopia are the commonest reported symptoms. Some individuals experience disorientation or confusion in addition to transient loss of consciousness termed syncope. Most individuals at the MBA first experience symptoms between the time of late uh, adolescence and their 20s. The frequency of attacks. Migraine with brainstem R is a rare episodic disorder and occurs in 1.5% of patients with headache. And it also occurs in about 10% of individual, individuals who get migraine with the typical visual aura. Sexual preference. preference. MBA occurs in men and women of all ages, but is most frequent in adolescent girls. Remember that the incidence of migraine in general in women is three times more than in men. The etiology. Migraine with the brainstem R is a variant of migraine with the R symptoms arising from the brainstem R, bilateral occipital hemispheres. MBA is a complex form of migraine which itself is genetic and not well understood. Like with regular migraine, the patient's lifestyle and environmental factors are important triggers or related issues in causation of attacks. MBA is not usually inherited, but in rare cases due to mutation of genes, MBA may occur in more than one person in the family. Genetic studies have now identified at least three genes that cause the familiar form of hemiplegic migraine. These genes all cause dysfunction of ion channels on brain nerve cells and lead to an increase in the levels of glutamate, an excitatory brain neurotransmitter which relates to spreading depression. Three genes are associated with familial hemiplegic migraine, another complicated type of migraine which comes with motor weakness on one side, i.e. the phrase hemiplegic. These same genes are not found in MBA. So the genes that are found with hemiplegic migraine are not found with migraine with brain tumora. So genetic testing is not indicated for MBA. Kurtzman, MacArthur, and Leike and Olson wrote in Neurology in uh, 2006 on an article titled Basler Type Migraine Clinical, Epidemiologic, and Genetic Features. The authors commented that, quote, it remains uncertain whether basilar type migraine is a subtype of migraine with typical R or a distinct phenotype or genotype, end quote. The authors found that, quote, the patients with 
baths or migraine were equally distributed among the 105 families with uh, typical migraine aura. The attacks of migraine aura were identical in families with or without Basler or brainstem migraine. No causative mutations and no linkage were identified. So Kirchman et al. concluded that, open quote, Basler type aura seemingly may occur at times in any patient with migraine with typical aura. There's no firm clinical, epidemiologic, or genetic evidence that Basler migraine is an independent disease entity different from migraine with typical aura. Now, the writers at that time were using Basler migraine. This was uh, 2006. Uh, there's a dera- there's an on st- development of how the name changed. Um, I'm going to talk about that some later. What's the duration of attack? The R symptoms can last from two minutes to over an hour, but not over 60 minutes. They're followed by a throbbing headache, which is often along the back of the head, and nausea. Like regular migraine, the headache part of the attack lasts from 4 to 72 hours. The diagnosis of migraine with brainstem aura is made clinically by analysis of the usual signs and symptoms. No neurologic test confirms the diagnosis, but testing should be pursued and should be normal. So what is a neurologic workup? Well, this would be specialized blood work, 24-hour heart monitoring, MRI brain scan, MRA, magnetic resonance arteriogram scan of cerebral arteries, an EEG, electroencephalogram. What is the differential diagnosis for migraine brainstem aura? Well, any disorder interrupting vertebral basilar vasculature, vestibular, vestibular migraine, hemiplegic migraine, posterior brain transient ischemic attack, or TIA, vertebral artery dissection, or thrombosis, seizures, CADA cell, MELAS, posterior fossa vascular and congenital abnormalities, arterial venous malformation, Arnold Chiari malformations, cavernous angioma, and lastly, platybasia. Comment. Migraine with brainstem aura can be confused with another rare migraine aura variant termed hemiplegic migraine. Individuals who have hemiplegic migraine experience weakness typically of the arm and face as part of their migraine aura in contrast to more common migraine aura-like visual scintillations or scotoma. It's not uncommon for people with hemiplegic migraine to have associated basilar migraine-like symptomatology during their hemiplegic migraine attack in addition to weakness. The duration of hemiplegic migraine and basilar-type migraine aura symptoms is typically longer than the visual aura experienced by most. So these types of attacks are called complicated migraine by some. What's the treatment? As stated previously, uh, triptans or drug, drugs with ergotamine or dihydrogotamine should not be used. For acute therapy, simple analgesics like NSAIDs, non-sterile anti-inflammatory drugs, and antiemetics such as Finnegan, which is promethazine, or Zofran, Ondantacitron may help with nausea. Pro- preventive therapy, previous medical art- articles, most of them about 10 years old, have suggested verapamil or tapiramate. There are no randomized trials regarding how best to treat migraine with brainstem aura due to its infrequent occurrence. MBA attacks are rare and sort of a one-time only event, so prevention is usually a moot point. There's no published data on treatment of MBA with the current new GPENT drugs for acute therapy migraine that came out in March of 2020, or CGRP drugs such as Amovig, HOV, or Mgality. What's the prognosis? Attacks of MBA may decrease with age, and since MBA is rare, there's not much published on the long-term outcome come from this disorder. The attacks are severe, but usually resolve on their own without permanent complication. However, like migraine with aura, MBA carries a slight risk for stroke, or what may be called migranous infarction. Uh, history. I have a long note here from Drs. Chang and Wang, who wrote, on the history of migraine with brainstem aura in neurology medlink. And they released that in several articles um, starting in 94 and updated in 2019. These, doc- these doctors and authors comment regarding the history of uh, how the name came and all. In 1961, Bickerstaff was the first to propose the concept of, quote, basilar artery migraine. 
He found two patients with identical symptoms that were only explicable on the basis of an abnormality of basal artery cir circulation. One of these cases involved a 14-year-old whose symptoms lasted a few hours and were repeated on numerous occasions. The other involved an elderly man whose symptoms progressed rapidly to coma and death and thrombotic occlusion of the basal artery with infarction in brainstem and occipital cortex uh, was demonstrated at autopsy. So it was by clinical analogy with a structural lesion in the basal artery and the symptoms of basal artery tear ischemia that the term basal artery migraine was first described. Gowers, famous uh, 19th century neurologist, uh, probably provided the first case history of migraine the brain stem R in the medical literature in 1907. He had a female patient who began to have right-sided migraineous attacks at the age of 18 years. Ten years later, these attacks changed and she began to lose the sight in both eyes. Quote, a black curtain seemed to descend and drop down a brilliant brilliant with thousands of golden points. She then experienced severe vertigo and dysesthesia in the arms, legs, and jaw, all lasting 10 minutes. Next, she became truly unconscious for 15 minutes and then recovered with severe headache spreading from the mastoids over the occipital region, which lasted for two hours. The International Headache Society reclassified the disorder as Basler-type migraine in 2004 to replace the terminology of Basler artery migraine. Because involvement of the Basler artery territory is uncertain, that was the Headache Classification Committee of the International Headache Society done in 2004. The diagnostic criteria are similar for those for migraine with R, except that the R symptoms clearly originate from the brainstem or bilateral occipital lobes. The symptoms of bilateral paresis was eliminated from the criteria in order to separate this disorder from hemiplegic migraine, which is thought to be a different deal. In 2013, the International Headache Society reclassified this disorder, disorder as migraine with brainstem aura to replace the terminology of Basler-type migraine. And that was done in 2013 by the Headache Classification Committee of the International Headache Society. Following ICDH-3 beta, ICDH-3 is published in, was published in 2018 and the diagnostic criteria for migraine with brainstem aura were as listed above and the name was changed then. Bickerstaff recognized in his personal series of 300 migraine patients, 34 whose, quote, clinical symptoms suggested an involvement of the Basler system in greater or lesser degree, end quote. He realized his patients that, and another quote here, the positive ill-formed visual hallucinations in homonymous fields at times closely resemble those produced by structural lesions of the occipital lobe, and some of the hemonopic manifestations are almost certainly due to involvement of the posterior cerebral artery. This, however, is the territory not of the internal carotid, but of the basal artery, and there seems no reason why if one branch of this vessel should be involved, others, or even the main vessel itself, should not be involved as well." End quote. Bickerstaff's case number one, I'm going to also read about here, a 13-year-old girl had had four menstrual periods, and three days after end of each had had an attack in which she experienced vivid flashes of light throughout the whole visual fields of both eyes. These flashes were sufficiently intense to obscure her vision completely. At the same time, she had tingling in both hands and feet, and her speech became so slurred as to be barely intelligible. She then became ataxic on attempting to walk. These symptoms lasted 15 minutes and then subsided and were followed by severe throbbing, occipital headache, and vomiting. After vomiting, she felt better, would sleep for several hours, and awaken free from headache. Her father and an aunt had severe migraine. In a review of Basarelli migraine and headache in 1985, Dr. Bickerstaff noted that a clear-cut clinical syndrome of Basarelli migraine had developed since its first report in 1961. Most patients who suffered with this type of migraine were teenagers when the first attack occurred. However, attacks could persist to migraineurs past middle age. The syndrome occurred in men and women with the usual preponderance of migraines occur more frequently in women. The course of an attack is similar to other R-type symptoms of migraine in that the intense neurologic symptoms 
like the R part, lasts 10 to 45 minutes and pass away to be followed by headache with or without emesis. If the patient falls into a deep sleep, there's a resolution of all symptoms upon awakening. The visual symptoms of tychopsia, flashing lights, wavy lines, or negative scotomas, such as graying of vision or visual loss, usually herald the onset of the attack. An important difference from the visual involvement that occurs with migraine, with aura, is that migraine with, with brainstem aura, the whole visual field in both eyes involved, eventually if the onset of the attack is partially hemonopic. In other words, if your vision could be divided into halves in each eye, migraine would involve one half, like the left temporal part of the vision in the left eye and the right nasal part of the vision. And that's typical migraine with aura. But brainstem aura, the whole visual field in both eyes involved it makes a clinical difference. Short duration, complete loss of vision is not uncommon with this syndrome. The numbness and tingling affect the mouth, hands, and feet to just above the wrist and ankles. Numbness, which is bilateral, comes after the visual symptoms. Right and left side of the mouth and tongue are affected. Next, vertigo, and less often, tinnitus occur, and the patient develops a midline cerebellar type syndrome with gait ataxia, such as would be seen with involvement of the cerebellar vermis in alcoholism. The patient who develops dysarthria or slurring speech with an off-balance gait mm -hmm. does give an appearance of drunkenness. Dr. Bickerstaff noted that patients who have attacks while driving have had difficult encounters with police, as you can imagine. Some patients develop impairment of consciousness, which may be mild drowsiness or coma, such as with a stroke or head injury. Some patients appear asleep, although the difference is they may be rised, aroused only to slip back again when stimulation stops. Like the symptoms of migraine with R, the symptoms of migraine with brainstem R usually regress in the order of appearance. Thus, vision returns, the numbness ceases, and then ataxia and dys dysarthria resolve. A severe throbbing neck and occipital located headache ensues, sometimes extending to the whole head and accompanied by severe vomiting. Untreated, the headache may last hours and improves with sleep. Finally, the patient rallies back awake, feeling exhausted. An important point here is that no motor weakness is allowed with migraine with brainstem aura, a feature that differentiates it from hemiplegic migraine. Rarely, patients with this syndrome may have permanent hemonopsias due to infarcts in the distribution posterior cerebral artery. Benson, in 1990, in an article in Headache entitled Vasar Artery Migraine Stroke, described a 25-year-old woman who had experienced migraine with brainstem aura attacks that result in a stroke. CAT scan of the cerebellar hemispheres revealed bilateral hypodense lesions. So if you go to my webpage on this article, uh, it's uh, www.drmigraine.com, and you go categories, and you go miscellanea migranica, and you can find this article on migraine brainstem R. I have a huge literature review there. So it's the end of my dictation on this uh, podcast for migraine with brainstem R please click the subscribe button down there. Thank you for listening, and God bless all you patients with migraine, especially any of you who have this unusual rare syndrome of migraine with brainstem aura. <laughs>